Um, our, our land survey methods really kind of lend themselves in many areas to this concept of a, of a one of an arterial system, uh, with, uh, which would create something like a 640-acre um, uh, uh, land mass that could then be broken down into 160-acre uh, uh, segments um, with a mile uh, minor arterial system in the middle uh, and across. Uh, so these 160-acre cells then could be uh, further densified with our collectors and our local systems with all kinds of different uh, uh, configurations of that system. For example, um, we have these, these grid systems that are, are typical of Indianapolis, which was built in, on a big square grid, uh, or a, a longer block grid like Minneapolis, um, or a modified grid like Fort Collins, or, of course, the much maligned and, and widespread loops and cul-de-sacs that are more typical of the, of the more current development. And so we see really in our urban areas a whole range of these network patterns, um, and with the older ones being, being more of the grid pattern. But, but this conceptual framework also lends itself to what in excess management is that half a mile signal spacing that is really efficient for progression and it gives you flexibility to coordinate your signal systems uh, for a variety of different volumes uh, at different times of the day and growth in the system over as well. But of course, um, you know, in some cases, uh, uh, as you densify, you may want to create even, even shorter spacings of continuous streets and raising that, that also you has, have to get that in terms of how it's going to relate to your signal systems. I think in the, in the access manual, what we're looking at, and what we think might be a logical uh, framework, uh, is, is four-lane major roadways at these one-half-mile spacing intervals uh, versus being at one mile, which can break down at the intersections very quickly uh, and not work so well. And then the other benefit of the four-lane, uh, of course, you, it allows these at-grade intersections or roundabouts uh, versus some sort of an interchange, a grade-separated interchange, if you're trying to make make those intersections work at, at the larger spacings. Um, it better accommodates the pedestrian and get the pedestrian across and it can start to build in the network you need for access to the abutting properties as well. So uh, just some kind of generalized and idealized concepts, but again, uh, in, in the major urban areas where, and, and, and I think, you know, in, in that 640 acre cell example I gave you, you could handle about 5,500 per square mile densities. But the, the, if you're starting to densify, of course, you can either do uh, shorter spacings of your, of your network, as I mentioned. You start to build in the transit systems and, and create a little different of an urban environment. Now, the city of Fort Collins and many areas across the U.S. are beginning to create these master street plans or have had them for some time, some, uh, or thoroughfare plans where they can go in to create this network classify it, identify what the desired cross-sections even might be in these areas and alternative cross-sections that you might assign, uh, what are the, the access spacing, signalized and unsignalized spacing criteria that we want to accomplish, uh, which ones have turn lanes and medians, which ones uh, uh, will not, uh, and then building that into a regulatory right-of-way needs and preservation. Uh, as well as uh, the improvement process, improvement priorities and strategies uh, for the community. And it can really provide a good framework uh, for building out uh, the area. It's interesting to me, they also have uh, street network standards in Fort Collins, and uh, uh, what they had was a quarter mile signalized street spacing, uh, as, and, and, but also using the half a mile uh, as provided in the access management plans and standards for the state highway system. And uh, 660 foot unsignalized street spacing, kind of general guidelines that they're shooting for. So going right down into the development review process and saying when a development comes in, here we have this framework and this plan, you have to include and look at the street connections all around you 
in directions of the existing or planned streets. We've had that in subdivision regulations since, you know, I started uh, my first, uh, read my first planning book and well before me. Um, but these are just kind of updated versions of that so that you start to look at that in the development review process and continue the streets that abut or adjacent to uh, sites. 